Welcome to our Good Friday service here at First Christian Church Decatur. I'm Jennifer Hassler and all of us are here out on the church lawn as you might see right just in the shadow of the cross for our good for this Good Friday service. So join me in the call to worship that would be in your bulletin that you may have gotten online. In his letter to the church in Philippi, the Apostle Paul quotes a hymn, Jesus Christ's state was divine, yet he did not cling to his equality with God, but emptied himself to assume the condition of a servant, and became as people are, and being as all people are, he was humbler yet, even to accepting death, death on a cross. His state was divine, yet he did not cling. Jesus did not grasp, did not hold tenaciously to his equality with God. This his equality, equality with God had been his since pre-existence, yet he emptied himself of his divinity, became fully human, and quietly, calmly, faithfully showed us how to follow God. Amen. Now we will continue with the seven last words of Christ on the cross. From Luke 23, 32 through 33. Two others also who were criminals, were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. From Luke chapter 23, verses 39 through 43. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, Are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, Do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds. But this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. He replied, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. The Gospel according to John chapter 19, verses 25 and 26. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. From Mark 15:33. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lemma sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? John 19, verse 28. After this, when Jesus knew that all was now finished, in order to the fulfill the scripture, he said, I thirst. John chapter 19, verse 30. When Jesus had received the wine, he said, It is finished. Luke 23, 44 through 46. It was now about noon, and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon, while the sun's light failed, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. 
Then Jesus, crying in a loud voice, said, Father, into thy hands I commend my spirit. Tonight we gather as one people to stand in the shadow of the cross. What is really dying on the cross in our souls? Our egos, our selfishness, our self-centeredness, our me, myself, and I-ness. When we die with Christ, we rise with Christ. We rise as a new creation in Christ. And what is being born anew and afresh in us? A selfless, other-centered new being that demonstrates God's love in all ways to all people. Paul wrote to the people of Galatia saying, but far be it from me to glory except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. We know that through the grace of God, when we die with Christ, we rise with Christ. Paul teaches us in 2 Corinthians that if anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. The old is passed away. Behold, the new has come. We are gathered here tonight as one people to stand in the shadow of the cross. And we remember from the teachings of Holy Scriptures of that one afternoon at the place called the place of the skull, which is called in Hebrew, Golgotha. Jesus was crucified and with him two others. A title was placed on the cross, which read Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The soldiers cast lots for his tunic and standing by the cross of Christ were his disciples. There were four disciples, one man and three women, including Mary Magdalene and his mother Mary. The disciple and the three women stood firm at the base of the cross. As you may know, Jewish custom forbids women to be near places of capital punishment, yet the women stood firm. Jesus had predicted 
that all the followers would abandon him at his death, scattering to their homes, but the women stood firm. In the face of death and in fear of reprisals, the women did not run away. They gathered for the death watch. In Matthew, Luke, and Mark, it is reported that the women watched Jesus' crucifixion from afar. In John, they are standing so close that Jesus can look down and speak with them directly. And Jesus looked down and saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved, the disciple whom he loved with agape, a higher love, an unconditional love. This is the love that Jesus calls us to have for one another. This is the love that we are called to live into and to live out. The disciple responds to Jesus with the same kind of love and trust by being there in Christ's time of need. Jesus said, woman, behold thy son, son, behold thy mother. And from that moment on, the disciple took care of Mary. The good shepherd tends his lambs and feeds his feet, his sheep. And Jesus cared for his own to the end of his life on earth. And the good shepherd gave up his life for his sheep. And the good shepherd calls out to us, for we are his flock of sheep. And says, Behold your sister, behold your brother, behold one another, love one another as I have loved you. This is the call to servanthood. This is a call to discipleship. This is a call that we can adhere to as we stand together in the shadow of the cross. It is one thing to behold, it is another to be held. Many of us like to be held, but have trouble holding on to one another. When we allow ourselves to behold and be held, we take a risk, we let down our walls, we lower our defenses, and thus we allow another soul to reach in into the depths of our weaknesses and our shadow places, to love us where we hurt the most, where we are the most tender, where we are the most broken, where the most need of healing and wholeness. When we behold and are beheld, we are transformed. In the foyer of the apartment in which I was raised, it was wide enough for several people to stand side by side by side. And one day there was a knock at the door and my mother raced one of her sons to the foyer, both hoping to be first to welcome home the person who was coming in the door. And when the door was opened, the person stepped inside and was immediately greeted by two huge hugs. And my mother remembers that moment of being enclosed in the embrace of the one she and her son both loved while hugging each other in the foyer. As we hold each other, we are beheld. As we, beheld, as we behold each other, we are held in the loving embrace of God. As we stand tonight together, in the shadow of the cross, close by, being there for the love of God. Let us also be open to the invitation from Christ to be held in the loving embrace of God and one another. All power be to the Creator and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Amen. in his life and ministry showed us how to love, how to be vulnerable, and how to seek people. As we go forth into the unknown, into our lives, let us hold that truth of God's love that is always with us and hold on to each other because love can never be canceled. Amen.